So welcome back to a new week on Out of the Bubble podcast. I hope you've all had a good week. This week we are talking about money, a subject that lots of women still find quite uncomfortable. I know it's not a subject that I talk regularly with my girlfriends about and I wonder why. It still seems to have that kind of link to shame about talking about money um, that's, that's ingrained in us from our parents' generation. So today I am talking to the fabulous Helen Louise Adams. Helen is the founder of the Female Business Revolution and she's a business coach and helps women really un unlock those mindset blocks with around money and she really is doing some great work to help women in business to achieve their goals financially and to have that conversation about being intuitive with our uh, our demands and our needs and our wants for, for financial security. And it's something that really needs to be out in the open. So I'm really looking forward to getting some tips and advice from Helen this morning and uh, grab a coffee and enjoy. So welcome to Out of the Bubble, Helen, how are you? I'm doing really well, thank you, Rachel. How are you? I'm good, thank you. It's lovely to see you. I know we've had conversations in the Facebook group recently about how I've actually been struggling with um, quite a bad anxiety through menopause, but I'm happy to say that it is starting to lift a bit, so I'm coming out of it, so thank you for asking. Good. So yeah, I've already done the introduction of you, Helen, to people. So mm -hmm. how do you describe yourself in three words and why? Right, so my three words would probably be, the first one would probably be bubbly. I'm a very bubbly character and I love walking in a room and, you know, making people laugh, making people feel important, getting that fun vibe going. So that would be my number one. Second one, I would say, um, I'm a really optimistic person. You don't find me down for long. And when something's wrong and I need to process it, I won't take longer than it needs. I'm not one of these who sort of wallows in misery for days and that, I, you know, we're not there for that. We've yeah. got to enjoy every minute of our life. So I try and be as optimistic as I can, look at the bright side of the situation and work out solutions rather than um, staying in the problem. And then the last one, I would say I'm a very determined person. When I've got something in my head, I've got to do it. I don't care how long it'll take or what I have to do to get it done, but I will definitely do that. So those would be my three words. Brilliant. Love those, Helen. And I, and I can see, you know, as soon as you said those words, because I've, I know you and I've followed you for, for a couple of years now, I can completely <laughs> see why those three words are relevant to you because, A, you know, you have been so determined um, to... Yeah get your business out there and also to help lots of other women, which I think is really important. So yeah. what gave you, let's go back to the beginning, where did the inspiration come from to, to work with women and try and help women to get over these money barriers, these blocks really that stop people from going on and living a really fulfilled life? So Rachel, I would say it's a theme that sort of went with me for my whole life. So just to give you a little bit of background, um, I'm an only child. And my dad was a headmaster and my mum was a teacher. So right from the beginning, I had no chance. And I always had this feeling when I was a little girl that I couldn't be who I wanted to be. I always had to be what they wanted me to be. But at the same time, I had another feeling that I'd break away from all that and blaze my own trail. So to cut a long story short, there were certain periods in my life where um, I knew deep down that my way forward was to do what I wanted to, do what I loved, do what I enjoyed, and then the money would follow. But I always had the conditioning of mum and dad and society and everyone around me saying, no, you can't do what you want. You've got to study, you've got to go to uni, and you've got to get your nine to five job. And that's the way it'll work. And I remember one time my mother saying to me, she said, don't ever put your money in a business because you lose all your money and um, everything will go wrong and people will start talking about you and laughing at you. So right from the start, she didn't believe any of that stuff. And um, when they were giving me all this conditioning, a little bit of me was dying because I thought, your mum and dad, they always know the truth, don't they? And maybe that dream's not right after all. But then as I progressed further and further through life, I found out that, yeah, actually, they were wrong and I was right. But all those years, 
I was too fearful to make it a reality. Yeah. And then one day, it was almost before I was 50, so it's taken me all that long. I had this feeling, you know, that I had to go back and I had to follow my soul. I had to do what was inside me, which was um, coaching women. And I didn't know how it would be right then, but as life progressed, everything was showing me that what I had to do was to help other women follow their souls. And by doing that, they would make that ideal income and have that lifestyle that they wanted. I mean, it's amazing. And I, but, you know, listening to that, I can so relate to that. And I'm sure people of our generation, you know, it was a generational thing. Our parents were very yeah. much like, you've got to get a nine to five job. That will be your career for the rest of your life. Don't deviate from that. Um, you know, don't think and don't dare to dream almost. Yes. And, and it, does, it did kind of create fear around yes. stepping out of that, which I think I'd like you has taken me until I'm 50 to, to dare to believe that I can do something different to, to what was expected of me. How, you know, how do you think we can, how do you think we can change that, that kind of cycle, I suppose, of parental kind of baggage? That we've, you know, it's not their fault. It was a generational attitude, and that it was what they were taught. But how do you change? How do you break that link? Okay, well, you know what I'm going to say to this now, don't you, Rachel? It's going within and listening to our own voice, because we've been so conditioned to go here, there, and everywhere to listen to other people, to listen to the next great teacher or the next great person. But unfortunately, that may not be resonating with our natural makeup, that may not be resonating with the way that we operate or the, our natural easy way of doing things. And once we go into our intuition, we don't need anything else because that gives us all the answers and the intuition will never tell us a lie. And knowing um, how to recognize your intuition, getting that high feeling, that high sort of vibration and knowing that that is the right thing, not what the other people have said can start you on that cycle and as you do it more and more you grow in confidence so you know straight away whenever you've got a feeling you'll be able to act on that and make what you want happen and I'll just give you an example right so this is an example of how different it can be so imagine you were interviewing someone to come and work with you or you were interviewing a new client and the client had everything right or the person had everything right on paper. And as you were having that conversation, all of a sudden you started feeling a twinge in your body. And you think, nah, it's okay. Let's keep going with the interview. Let's take this person on. And then the next few weeks, they um, had arguments with all the staff. They messed all your system up. You wasted a load of time training them or you wasted a load of time having them on your course or whatever it is that you were doing. And you thought, if I'd have followed that little twinge, that would have saved me maybe thousands of pounds and a ton of time and energy. So that is a good reason as well. With an example like that, that shows you how priceless your intuition is and why you should use that above anything else. Yeah, do you, do you think that... I mean, the age of your clients, have you mostly worked with, with women of our age group in the 40s and 50s or is it a wide kind of range? Because it seems to me that when we get to our 40s and 50s, we have this kind of light bulb moment where we do start thinking, OK, we've got to start listening to ourselves now. Yeah, we do. Well, most of them are of our age, but now I'm finding some of the younger ones in the 20s and 30s coming through because um, they seem to be a lot more open. They They don't seem to have... I don't know how to say this, they don't seem to have bowed down to authority as much as we do. And, you know, if they don't like something, they'll say, hey, I'm not doing this. So I think they're in that sort of mindset where they want to get all that stuff sorted out sooner rather than later, which is absolutely amazing. And it's really good for people like us because then that's helping the legacy that we leave. Yeah, absolutely, passing it on. And do yeah. you think that it's that kind of feeling of the fear of that holds us back as well the fear of the unknown and the fear of trusting yeah. that intuition i mean how did you you started your new business kind of the beginning of the pandemic that must have been quite a scary thing to do so how did you get past that yeah so at that time it we were doing everything online so everything moved and there were mothers meetings and 
business meetings and everything going on. So I think in those first um, few months, I thought, right, okay, this is a chance to get my name known and the message known. And obviously you have to shout out loud because everybody was coming online at the same time. Yeah. So I remember, I think I did um, 17 guest speeches in two months wow. uh, in these mum in business groups to sort of get my name known. So that sort of built up my name and it also stopped me thinking, oh God, what's happening? But I think what helped it as well is this intuitive thing because it was like encouraging me, it was saying, come on, this is what you're doing. You're doing the right thing. Go for it, enjoy it. And, you know, when I'm out there speaking, when I'm out there talking about what I do, it just lights me up. I don't think of anything else but that. All the fear disappears. Yeah. So um, my way of getting rid of any fear is just thinking about the fun of what I do, the enjoyment, going out there and really giving it some and lifting other people up at the same time. There's no better feeling than that. Absolutely. And I guess it's turning that anxiety into, exi into excitement, isn't yeah. it? It's turning the narrative in your head and sitting and flipping it. Yeah, definitely. Are there some kind of common themes that you that you deal with? We know we've spoken about the fact that, that we've kind of been had ingrained that we've got to work nine to five to make a living and stepping out of that kind of time bracket is, is un, you know, unnormal, I suppose, to previous generations. But what are the other kind of common barriers that you come across? Right, so the biggest one that I come across is women thinking that they're not worthy. And there's all sorts of stuff around that. So I can't do this. Um, I've got other priorities first. I've got to look after my family. Yeah, okay, you've got to look after your family. That's true. But some women, they don't even put themselves first. Even some of them are still like not getting their 10 minutes a day. And, uh, you know, this big, big message about you can't pour from an empty cup. You have to put yourself first because at the end of the day, looking at it that way, if you're going and going and going, as well as um, destroying yourself, all those other people around you are going to get a half assed version of you. Mm. Whereas if you took that 10, 20 minutes a day and felt absolutely amazing, they would feel much better as well. You would uplift them because you'd be in a naturally uplifted state and everyone would benefit a lot more. So that's one, not being worthy and all the stuff that's associated with that. And then another one is not trusting themselves because, you know, women have always been told what, more so than men, women have been told what to do for so long. And, you know, go and ask him or go and ask somebody else. Don't trust yourself, just follow. And it's not, women have got the biggest intuition. We're more intuitive than guys are. And we have got that massive, powerful tool and it's just a case of getting them to trust it slowly, giving them one thing to do and that working out, then another and another and another. And as they follow the steps, then they can see that, yes, it does work and that's the way they should go. Yeah. So those should be the biggest then, not being worthy and not trusting themselves. And why do you think we find it still, as women, so hard to talk about money? Um, you know, it, it does seem to be, I don't talk about money with my friends very often. It's not something that we have normal conversations about, whereas men seem to kind of be quite free and easy about it. And there doesn't seem to be any stigma attached. Whereas if women perhaps were more open and had these conversations, we would all be more confident about it. Yeah, I think some women still have that feeling. Maybe they have a feeling of shame around, because there's a lot of association with women and shame mm. around money. And, you know, maybe some women do want to earn more than their husband, but they're frightened to because, you know, it would upset the relationship. It would upset the apple cart, you know, from our generations, all this thing, men being the breadwinner used to be the norm. And, you know, if she wants to go out and she wants to earn six figures or she wants to buy a home for her children or she wants to buy a brand new Lamborghini or whatever it is, you know, and hubby's there driving his little mini, doesn't look too good, does it? So that could be one thing. And then maybe another thing could be, um, there are women who want to do more work, but um, they're thinking, how can I do this? They don't trust themselves because they've been depending on hubby all that time. And all of a sudden that thing's gone off in their head and they say, oh, what do I do now? How do I get money? 
So it's like, <clears throat> you know, when you're in that conversation, let's um, change the subject. It's about reframing everything, isn't it? And that takes a bit of work, though, doesn't it? This is not a quick process, is it? No, it's not. It's reframing and it's, it's giving them this big um, affirmation that, yes, as a woman, it's safe to earn money and it, it's safe to earn whatever amount of money you want to earn. It's safe to earn millions of pounds. It's safe to earn six figures a year. It's safe to be, yeah, this one. It's safe to be in charge of your own money. Hmm. Yeah. Because a lot of women struggle with that too. I was when I first started doing that business, and I was asking people, you know, is this something you want to do? Do you want to come on board and work with me? And some of the women, they didn't even have their own bank account, and I'm thinking, whoa, yeah, no. Even if you've only got five pound in there, have your own bank account. Yeah, it's a lesson I learned, to be honest, when I got divorced, I did find myself kind of almost having to start from the beginning. I was almost financially yeah. invisible. Um, and it was a lesson learned and I promised myself that from that moment on I would make sure that I was in control of, of my finances and knew exactly what I was doing and it was in my name and moving forward. But I think there'll be lots of women that, that have experienced that as well. Yeah, definitely. It's a hard lesson, but, you know, now we'll never get caught again. Yes. Yeah. And you now work with women and I've seen, I've, I've read lots and lots of positive responses about how, you know, women have really changed their lives around from working with you and have gone on to, to earn, you know, exactly what they've asked for and more. So yeah. can you talk a bit about the course that you run and the process that you go through to, to help these women? Yeah, of course. So I am all about um, women using their intuition to generate that money so it's all unlearning and relearning what we were taught all the way through and it's this sub uh, process of getting out of your head and stopping thinking logical way getting into your body and feeling what comes next because when you can do that more and more and more you can leap forward much faster because when you give your intuition space to breathe and um, that's when the light bulbs will come and with a light bulb there's no energy that gets in the way you follow a light bulb just as it is and you will get a big leap forward mm -hmm. and with that process growing and growing and growing you will be able to take massive leaps forward that you wouldn't if you were just doing it logically so you could cut say um, a big juicy 10-year money goal down into five years by doing it the way that i teach and um, it's much more fun as well it's much more easy in flow and and the big big thing that i find and i bang the drum for is one size does not fit all and every single woman who comes to me will make money her way mm -hmm. and each one of those will be different so we look at what their strengths are how they can get the money easier and faster and um, work with a plan that does it that way but the plan will also be made from their intuition what comes out when they sat there feeling rather than thinking and it's going back to their truth as well getting them to go back to their truth because when we think about our real dream about money the reason why we know that's true is because there's no conflict in our energy at all our bodies feel right our bodies can feel all excited or at least they can feel calm there's no twinges there's no pain there's no nothing so we know that that's right so there's a big part of getting them to trust themselves building their inner core as well and following it through with these um, intuitive acts. So the way that I work at the moment, I've got a really brilliant 90 day program, which is just available for five women who are really looking to make that breakthrough. So at the end of that, they don't just get the money transformation, the mindset transformation and a shift in the balance, but they're getting tools that are going to make them hundreds of thousands of pounds over time so people who want that that's the first thing i've got five open spaces then when people come into me first of all when it's a brand new thing when they're not used to working with intuition the entry level course that i do it's called income igniters and it's a three module course it's just 97 pound but it's a brilliant place to start because it gives you these main three foundations and it also gives you that first shift to make that initial injection of cash into your bank so then you can follow from there the other thing i do too is timeline therapy sessions and these are really really powerful 
if you're struggling or if you've got stagnant energy in your business and you're stuck, then a timeline therapy session will shift that energy fast. And the way that it works is it goes deep down into your subconscious because we, our conscious will only take us so far. We may think, yeah, we're really believing in these things, but our behavior patterns are showing something different. Yeah. And we don't realize that. That is the beauty of the timeline therapy. That comes in and it wipes all that out so fast so that you can get back on that intuitive road again. That's really interesting. And I know I've, you know, I've watched the videos that you've talked about the timeline therapy and you've had some amazing results with it, haven't you? Yeah, definitely. There might be some women here that are listening to this thinking that this sounds, sounds amazing, but how do I even make those tiny steps to start listening to my intuition? How am I going to find it? Is it going to be a light bulb mo moment or do I have to work at it? What could you say to them to just take that first small step? Okay, well, the first thing that they have to do if they're not doing this already, they've got to make a non-negotiable of 10 minutes in the day where they just have that time for themselves, just that quiet time. So then they're getting used to having quiet moments. Then they're giving them intuition time to breathe because I'm sure you know, and I know a lot of people like this, a lot of women, they won't sit down. They'll say, oh, I'm too busy. And they'll find something to do because yeah. they don't want to hear what their little voice is saying. They're frightened of it. So the first thing is getting them to know your little voice isn't going to frighten you. It's going to help you. It's going to get you out of the situation that you're in. And it's going to get you to that first class life that's your birth. Yeah, not a surprise. The first class life that's your birthright. So sit down and have those 10 minutes a day. Make them non-negotiable and get that quiet time. And the more and more you can do that, that will give your intuition time to breathe. You may get a light bulb then. You may get it later on in the day. You may get it the next day, but you will start getting those light bulbs if you do that every single day. What's been your biggest light bulb moment so far? My biggest light bulb moment? Oh, I'll tell you this. I, had a, I did a live today on a dream that I had. And this sort of cemented anything. So this dream I had, it was about um, eight weeks ago. And I was sitting by this river. I think I was meditating or something in this really sort of calm space. So I was sat there cross-legged and there was just me there and I was feeling really calm. And there was nobody there but me. And then all of a sudden this guy came up and then, sorry about this, a bit gruesome. So he had this knife and he ripped my stomach open. Ooh. And I didn't even flip, I didn't even feel it. I was just sat there watching him do it. And then all of a sudden, as he ripped my stomach open, all this money started coming out of my stomach and it wouldn't stop. It just kept coming and coming like a slot machine. And then when I sat down and I analyzed that dream, um, it said that if someone's having their stomach ripped open, they're meant to be teaching people something in a new way. So I thought that just fits with what I'm doing because I'm teaching people this intuitive way. Yeah. And the significance of the stomach is going into their gut feeling rather than in their head. And as well, when you're ripping that open and all the money's coming out, you are helping them tap into their gut and unlock all this unlimited money that's available to them. So that was amazing because then that reinforced the fact that yeah, I'm on the right path. Yeah, this is my mission. And what a more beautiful way to find it than in a dream. Yeah. And I didn't take notice of it straight away. But that's another thing. When you're ready for it, everything opens up. Yeah, I think, I mean, I, I really like kind of analysing dreams. And I think it's really an interesting topic in itself, isn't it? That you can learn so much from your dreams if you spend the time really thinking about it. I always yeah. wish I could remember my dreams more. <laughs> that's my, yes. my, my problem. <laughs> I know that some people say they don't dream at all, but I think everybody dreams to a small extent. Yeah, you just can't they must do. Them. Yes, definitely. Now you've got this big, big dream and big goal as well to to reach at least a million women, haven't you, on your yeah. mission? Uh, which I think would be phenomenal. How is it feeling as you are helping and seeing the success in the women that you that you're really coaching and helping? Oh, I just love it, Rachel, because it's every time you see them getting a light bulb. It used to be the same for me because I was a teacher before and I used to love it when a kid got a light bulb and they really thought, oh, I get this now. And it's the same thing with the women. You know, every time you see them opening up and realising, you know, my life is all about me 
I can create this, I can create my own lifestyle. It just lifts up your soul. It just makes me feel so good. Mm. And, you know, that's the best part of it, to see these women having these breakthroughs so that they can start living the life that they want, not what somebody else has told them to live. Yeah. And they don't have to follow anyone else but themselves. And that's the biggest thing you can do with your life. And yeah. I feel really honoured to have this mission. Yeah, I think it's fabulous. And and I also know that this has been a journey for you. You've not always had it easy. So you've you've been on your own journey. So how does it feel from looking back when you, you know, a single mum and you you your changing career paths and you went to university later in life to, to get your degree? How does yes. it feel now looking back at that journey to where you are now? What would you go back oh. and tell her? Yeah, if, if I if I went back, I would say to her, just keep on following your soul and don't care about what other people say and what other people think. Because when, you, when you're true in yourself, when you're strong in yourself, you'll be able to get that money. You won't be depending on anyone else. You'll be doing it your way, but you just have to trust. Yeah, and I think that's the beauty of as we age, that we do stop caring about what other people think as much as we did when we were younger. And I think that's something that's really, I found really quite liberating to not have to worry yeah, about it is. people that really aren't, you know, important to me in my lives. Obviously you still care about the ones that are close to you, but it's yeah. that general kind of carrying that baggage of other people's expectations, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. They don't feed you, they don't clothe you. Bless them and send them on their way. Absolutely. Well, it's been a pleasure talking to you, Helen, as always. I really, you know, I'm a big fan of the work that you're doing and I've seen the impact that you've had on lots of women that, that I know that are in my circle and I think it's fantastic. So what would your kind of long-term goal be? Do you have a big aspiration other than reaching all those women? A big aspiration? Do you mean um, a personal one? Yes, yeah, for you. So, yeah, there's, there's loads of things I want to do. Like, I want to buy my house outright. I want to have my beach mansion in Brazil. Yes, that'd be nice. <laughs> yeah, and I want to um, I, I want to do things to help the local community. I want to make a bit because you know I do with the music teaching as well. Yes, and that helps me personally. That lifts me up. I want to create a nice music culture in my area, and then um, be a good use to the community as well. But have fun doing it. Have lots of fun. Have the right people around me and um, enjoy what I do. Yeah, fabulous. Well, I, am, I have no doubt that you will get there, Helen. Thank you, Rachel. So my last question that I ask all my guests, because I'm really wanting to encourage women to be more complimentary about themselves. So if you were to pay yourself a compliment, what would it be? You never get, you're, you're so good that you don't give up. You keep on going until the end. And I am so proud of you. Love that. Thank you so much. How can people find you, Helen? So um, most of my links, you can get them on Linktree. So it's linktr.e forward slash Helen Louise Adams. But if you want to PM me on Facebook, which that's where I am most of the time, just come to Helen Louise Adams and send me a message and I'll be really pleased to um, speak to you and find out how I can get you that million pounds or whatever it is that you want. Fabulous. I shall add the uh, links to the show notes. Um, both. So thank you so much. Pleasure to talk to you as always. You are really welcome. And it's been a real pleasure as well. Thanks, Helen. Take care. Thank you. So I hope you found Helen's conversation today. Food for thought when it comes to money. I know it's a subject that we don't talk about. I don't talk about regularly with my friends. And it's something that my parents definitely brought me up to. Not talk about money as it's seen as a vulgar conversation and something that we shouldn't brag about if we have it and to not moan about it if we don't have it and to certainly not to have too big a dreams and aspirations for our financial security. And as women, I think it's really important that we open up these conversations and we do dream big and we do follow our gut instinct about what we should expect from life financially and to develop our own financial security. So really appreciate Helen's input on that, particularly when it comes to listening to our own intuition as well. I think it's something that we've got to start listening to more. And that's a freedom I think that comes with age. And I think it's something that we should be really grateful for in our forties and fifties and beyond that we do care less about what other people think. And it is now our time to really plan ahead 
and to live life to its fullest. And if that means having more financial security and more financial success, then that's all the better. And talking of financial success, I love doing this podcast. It's something I'm really passionate about. And I have now added a buy me a coffee to the podcast show. So if you're enjoying the interviews and you're left feeling inspired with over 100 interviews to choose from now, all at different stories, all different stories of women to share and kind of inspire you in your midlife journey. If you are enjoying them, then why not buy me a coffee? I don't earn any money from the podcast. It's not something I have any sponsorship with. Uh, I love doing it. It's a real passion project. But having the treat of the money for a coffee would be a huge, huge kind of thank you. So thank you so much. If you do do that, I would really appreciate it. See the links in my podcast bio and the episode show notes. But by all means, feel free to buy me a coffee. So that's my money mindset ticked off for this week. I will be back next week with another dose of inspiration for you. In the meantime, keep being fabulous.